All right, all right, all right, folks. We are back finally for the finals, appropriately. It is Fnatic versus Epsilon Esports here in the Gaming Grids 5v5 Domination New Year's Bash. $1,500 on the line, $1,200 of that going to the winner, $300 to the second place team, and a $100 bonus to the MVP of this match. It's going to be best of three starting out on lockers. And uh, I believe the second map is... Gomud, is that correct, Brett? Yeah, so the second map's going to be Gomud Railway, and I believe the third uh, has yet to be decided. So we'll be going to find that here pretty soon. The third map, if necessary. Again, it's aggregate ticket on the maps as normal, but it will be best of three maps as we see the breakout here. A three-man push by Epsilon on to C. Let's see how this fares out for them. We're watching from Mayek's perspective. Pushing up, being uber-aggressive here over on C. He sees unfixed there. Takes down unfixed, but he eats a face full of lead from a teammate from Fnatic and goes down. David Duquet, meanwhile, pushing up onto C flag. He's burning it there, trying to come up behind Windhaven. He does take him down. And it looks like Epsilon is going to win the day on C to take control of an Alpha Charlie burn. But meanwhile, Valutaja cleaning house on Alpha. So nice rotation by Fnatic to come over here. So interesting breakout from both teams. A lot of action already. Oh yeah, from best belief from both of these teams, which I honestly think that this is. Uh, do, do we know who picked these maps? Uh, I believe Chad speculated that uh, Fnatic picked the uh, this map, Lockers, as it's really? one of their I favorites. I think that's what he was saying. I would expect that this would be an Epsilon map. I've seen them doing some really, really good work on Lockers <coughs> throughout the previous matches that I've seen them on. And uh, they are going to be doing very well as they're going to be uh, uh, getting that BC hold right now. Um, we should be seeing a big push over here onto A in just a second, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Nobody there for Fnatic right now. It's completely wide open, so A will be going back into the favor of uh, Epsilon. And now Epsilon should be able to take C-Flag here. It's going to be a one-on-one -on -one between Winghaven and Core, and Core just needs to get that burn. He doesn't need to try and poke out and do anything with it. But this is that strong position that we were talking about earlier within the, uh, the day, uh, having that CA hold. And... Uh, we will be having David 2K possibly getting a back race here. Oh, nice game sense there as we're going to have Value Taja turning around. Trades out, though. And uh, Fnatic will be getting out to C to get that burn. Yes, it looks like Fnatic is going to take control of C. Meanwhile, they do control Bravo. And we have Unfixed there kind of holding the fort for his team with Value Taja there. It looks like Epsilon's going to push forward. We're seeing a showdown between Mayek. He wins the day there. He's got a nade out, and right now it's still a BC hold for Fnatic. Let's watch from Gara's perspective. Epsilon takes down Winghaven, pushing up onto the hill there. He's got a good vantage point, but he's not going to be aggressive. Looks like he's just going to hang out up top, get a nade out perhaps, wait for a spawn. Oh, another... Oh, no, trades out with too easy, so it looks like Fnatic will maintain control of C. So a nice hold here for Fnatic to start this round and the finals match here on Lockers. Yeah, that was a that was a very very critical trade that happened right there. If he had not gotten that, uh, that would have allowed uh, Epsilon to push down onto C flag. But it does look like they're going to be doing so anyways. It was just slightly delayed. Now we will have uh, Fnatic Mort as well as uh, Unfixed and Winghaven gearing up for a push over here onto B. They're going through metal detectors. They've already alerted uh, Epsilon to their presence here. They actually went through the metal detectors, which rings. But it doesn't matter because they're just going to beef in there with their superior gun skills. It was going to be able to take out Duke, which arguably right now is Epsilon's best fragger. Yes, a nice job there. Fnatic still maintaining control of the two-flag burn, it's, but it's only 167 to 156. Extremely close game thus far. We've seen a three-man push from Epsilon on the backside of A. Duke BT coming through J. Core coming through the backside. And it looks like Epsilon David Duque going down in the snake uh, area. And... Four goes down as well, so nice defense there by Fnatic over on Alpha. Meanwhile, it looks like all quiet on C as Gera's just kind of, uh, he's playing on his lonesome there. Fnatic, Value, Taja, and Too Easy pushing out of Bravo. It looks like another backside push. David 2K coming into the backside of A. Oh, and he goes down again. Fnatic, just really nice defense on Alpha right now. But the thing is, though, is that they're not spawning outside. <clears throat> Epsilon still is in a very good position as long as they don't spawn outside. 
Once they start getting outside the building and Fnatic pushes them out and they have those three three choke points that they have to go down to, that's when they're in trouble. Um, and that they were able to make their way onto A. Unfortunately, it looks like Fnatic had an easy time to get onto C. That was a very good move there by Valutasia uh, to recognize, hey, I need to get onto the C flag. Although he didn't cap it, it did take their attention away from him a little bit. And there's only going to be one person over here that's going to be Grar uh, that's going to be stuck in the snake right now to help hold this off. But... Epsilon, um, or I'm sorry, Fnatic, deciding not to go through metal detectors instead. They went ahead and went up here towards J and might be making another C push. So a nice job by Epsilon to respond, although they are down a man now. They do have the two flag burn. It's an AC holder. Watch from unfixed perspective. Moving to the outside, looking to make a move on to Charlie, but he's taking fire already from the hillside. He's going to have to slow play this. Drop a med pack. He knows it's at least one. Nade right in his face. Oh, takes some damage. There's another one, and he does go down, but his teammate Winghaven is also there. It looks like C is going to stay on. Oh, no. Winghaven getting the kill. Oh, he can't quite get the revive. He does go down as well. Meanwhile, it looks like Morte taking control of Alpha. Bravo being contested by Gara, who is over here with the it looks like the scar is he running the scar there yes he is running the scar h it's 142 to 26 in favor of Fnatic. a close game thus far to start the finals yeah and epsilon akash uh i don't know if he was the one that's in there but he is now so somebody dropped from epsilon epsilon akash just now getting back in so that was a huge blow right there and it's gonna allow Fnatic to uh to get that two cap bleed in their favor and see now they've pushed Epsilon outside of the map. They are now uh, not in the buildings. And that's going to be a lot harder because, again, it's going to focus them down into these choke point areas uh, to where they have to fight their way through every single time. And really, one person from Fnatic can kind of hold off a choke point by himself long enough to allow his team to shift over to help defend. Yeah, that's a great point. One of the aspects about pushing from outside is the visibility difference from coming from outside to inside. You're extremely vulnerable for a fraction of a second when you come in. As we see Meg taking down one on Alpha, pushing up. Oh! Oh, he takes down two, so nice play by Maek. This is the kind of plays that Epsilon needs to take control of these flags. But he's moving off the burn. I'm not sure what his thinking is there. Oh, he's got a teammate there spawning on it. Nice job. AC hold here, but we're seeing Fnatic quickly responding. Looks like they are going to decide to push C heavy as we got too easy and unfixed. Pushing out through gate. Meanwhile, Winghaven is back on the backside. We're going to see a push onto C shortly, I think, from unfixed. But meanwhile, we do see two from Epsilon. A nice rotation onto Bravo. I think they're going to take control of that one. We could see a triple gap from Epsilon right here. Yeah, now we're going to be seeing Epsilon uh, in a little bit of trouble. It looks like over here next day. Wow, who was Double that? kill, that Duke PT. Duke. Wow, that was a great save over there in J. They are not going to be in trouble. I was about to say, they were in trouble of losing A right there, but a nice save on his part. They did end up getting the triple cap, which is just going to help them to even that score up once again. And, you know, honestly, I like the way they're playing. Look how Epsilon is kind of, they're, they're sitting back. They're not trying to pressure this B push right now. They're kind of just waiting for Fnatic to come back at them and grab the picks. That was beautiful play right there. They don't have to keep this triple cap. All they have to do is keep the two cap and make sure that they're on the back foot. And that's exactly what they did there. So nice play on Epsilon to see if they can hold this A push off. Because we're going to have uh, Valutasia as well as Too Easy, Unfixed, and more. They're all out for blood. Look at this push into A. Oh, a double kill for Valutasia. Oh, but he gets taken out from the kitchen area. It's a showdown on Alpha. It's a hard push. We got Unfixed coming in. It looks like he has it looks like fanatic's gonna come out on top on alpha so a nice response by them despite being down moments earlier to the triple cap that was a great push there onto a i mean i gotta say epsilon really making uh, a big mistake there they, they had one sitting into j but they never really used it um or never came out and uh, uh tried to stop any of those pushes they kind of just hid there for a while so not really sure what the deal was there but b flag is going to be contested 96 to 95 in favor of fanatic right now uh, or I'm sorry, it's even right now. So it, it's anybody's game, honestly, at this moment. I've seen both of these teams come back from huge, huge losses uh, in the second round. So, you know, it, right now it, it is not decided by anything. Uh, but we will be having Fnatic moving back out to C flag. Uh, looks like they tried to take it, but uh, we're going to be having some shots coming in from Garar that ended up pushing them off of that flag. So they will be keeping it for just a few moments. But as that was happening, Mort was able to sneak around the backside, and uh, he's going to be able to cap B. 
Yeah, nice job he's capping B, and, and it does look like Unfix is actually going to be able to take C. He was able to get up under the helipad, up by the pillar, so the three guys outside couldn't actually get shots on him, but it does look like they do go down, and Bravo and Epsilon are going to clean up over there and take B, but it's an AC hold right now, 89-87 to 87 in favor of Fnatic. Hell of a start to this first round in the finals on lockers. Remember, it's best of three, so we're just one round in. It's going to be a hell of a match, I think. 88-83, we're watching from Akash's perspective, being really aggressive. Rushing right into A point. It goes down quickly, perhaps too aggressive. Core also coming in. He goes down to Morte. And a bit careless push there by Epsilon, not slow playing it and, and getting their picks before moving into the burn. Yeah, that was a little bit... Uh, uh little, little bit unorganized right there. They kind of just threw their bodies at it. But uh, we will be seeing them pushing back out towards C, I think. Uh, nope, they're going to be going back through J. Uh, so, yeah, Epsilon, I think, needs to be able to retake A. I think they're going to be uh, in a really good position to to get it right now as there's only one player back here for Fnatic. It's going to be more to hold this off, and he is going to be able to get one pick. But look at the rotations now for Fnatic. Unfixed immediately as, as A is going to be burning. He is shifting over onto B flag. Uh, Winghaven jumps down from Hill. He's going to be shifting as well as of E2 Easy getting a spawn going off. So they are already in a position to get onto B flag and they're winning that burn. Yeah, very nice rotation. Good commentary there, Brett. It's a 20 ticket lead for Fnatic. Watch from unfixed perspective. He is going to take control of that Bravo flag. It's going to be a BC hold for Fnatic, but they're being extremely aggressive. A three man push, two through cut. Watch from Morte's perspective. Nade out into the med lab area. There's another nade. Oh, he eats one of his own. His teammate goes down. Can he get to revive? There's so many nades everywhere. Trying to take up Valu Taja. He does get him up. So there's still two men in cut. They can make a push on the Alpha. Perhaps get a triple cap here, but Mayak takes him out from, it looks like, the detectors area. We switch over to Winghaven, and it looks like a BC hold for Fnatic. Epsilon going to push towards Bravo. Let's watch Duke. He's on B. And there's two in front of him. It's Morte and Unfix. That's a tall order. Can he take them both down? Takes one. Oh, he can't try, quite get the second, and he does go down. Cleaning up on B flag is Fnatic. Yeah, Winghaven with a huge miss right there. Uh, basically alerts Core to his presence, and uh, he is not going to be able to make the kill there. If he hadn't been able to get that pick, that would have been huge. Unfortunately, he didn't. So Core knows that Winghaven is back in the backfield over here next to A. A is now going to be flashing. Core or uh, Winghaven will be able to pick up Duke, and that might be some really good timing here because Valutation and Too Easy are also going to be making their play over here through metal detectors, but I think it was going to be just too much, and now Fnatic is going to have to back off of B and make sure that they do not push back out to try and get a triple cap. At the same time that's happening, Garar is now going to be out here towards C flag and unfixed, and Mort will be able to basically out... Uh uh, outman him and they will be getting onto that C burn so uh, right now Epsilon needs to have a push onto B flag to try and circumvent having a two cap in favor of uh, Fnatic. Yeah right now Fnatic looking to try to close out this round as it is only about a 20 ticket difference we're watching from looks like Epsilon got the, the back B spawns we got Gera. He's right above Bravo. Duke PT also coming in from the steps. He drops down. They're going to pinch right on too easy. That's a nice play by those two guys taking control of Bravo. Looks like they're going to clean it up as they are the only two there. We see Morte coming in. Oh, goes down to Gera using the scar there. Nice job. They are going to take control of Bravo. Let's look to see if Fnatic rotates. No, Epsilon actually is going to try to reinforce Alpha side as... Fnatic is kind of on the outside, on the back side of A. Let's see how they do with this three-man push. Valutaja coming in through Snake, shooting towards Duke PT. Can't quite get him through the crack there. Duke PT tossing some nades out. And actually, we see Epsilon Guerra going outside C, going for the triple cap for Epsilon. Yeah, and this is exactly what they need to do. Oh, if they could have gotten that C cap, that would have been huge there. Unfortunately, they were not able to make it. It's going to be Mayak and Duke PT trying to hold off three players from Fnatic. Unfix is going to be making his way into Med Lab. Should be able to pick up uh, the last kill on Mayak. No, he doesn't. A does go into their uh, uh, position right now. So it's going to be a two cut flag cap back in the possession of uh, Fnatic. 46 to 29. It's a very close game right here. Um, Epsilon is kind of spread out all around. I mean, there's no really lines within this match. They're kind of just everywhere. Mayak, though, has a chance to get a nice back range over here onto Mort as well as Winghaven. We'll be able to pick up one. Now A is going to be flashing 
and, and going back into the favor of Epsilon. So they are in no way, shape, or form out of this yet. Now C is going to be, if they can get this triple cap here, this is going to be huge. This is a great position for them. We got Akash on the burn, and we do have Mayak covering him from the hillside, and he's going to drop back, and it does look like they are going to take control of C and get the triple cap. And meanwhile, Fnatic Morte over on Bravo. He's got a nade out. Looks like they are going to take control of that one. So it'd be a bit of a flip-flop. 37 to 21 in favor of Fnatic. Extremely close game in the first round here on Lockers. Watching from Morte's perspective, coming up the steps, looking towards the J area. It's an AC hold for Epsilon. Looking to make up this 10 ticket difference here in the first round to hopefully take it and gain some momentum in this finals matchup. Morte coming through cut area towards Infirmary A. Looks like he's gonna perhaps get on the burn. No, he's gonna slow play it a little bit. Wait for some reinforcements here. And he is out on the burn. Fnatic Morte catches. Core sleeping on the backside of Snake. Takes him down. There's two more in the kitchen med lab area. It's Duke PT. Fnatic Morte. Oh, he goes down. Duke PT. A nice job by Epsilon to hold on there. To showdown. Valutaja is there. Oh, and Epsilon wins the day on Alpha. It looks like they are going to take control of it. It's 20 to 16. Hell of a finish to this round, Brett. But it's not over yet. We did see B getting complete or contested right now. A is going back into the favor of Epsilon. So it's 16-16. Uh, Fnatic is going to try and make a play over here onto A. Or it looks like maybe onto C is they're going to be pushing out uh, three people now. Two going to be going over to J. Uh, two going to be going straight out to C. If Akash can hold this off, this is going to be huge. Nope, not able to do so. And uh, Fnatic might be able to clutch it here. If they are going to be uh, creating their line, uh, Epsilon has got to push B right now. Three of them are going to be gearing up over here into med uh, or metal detectors. We're seeing uh, Core going to be getting taken down by Mort. Mort will be getting back raised right here. He does go down by Duke BT. they got to get onto B now. Eight tickets remaining for Fnatic, 12 for Epsilon. There you go. B is now going to be flashing. So this is going to come right down to the wire, the closest game that we have seen yet uh, in this tournament. Oh, it's incredible. It's 7 to 10 right now. Duke PT coming into Bravo to take control, but got the air kill on one of Fnatic there. Oh, tries to take out another, but he does go down. It's 4 to 10. The two flag cap in favor of May, uh, in favor of Epsilon, but Fnatic is in desperation mode on a Bravo. Valutaja takes one down. It's one ticket left, but they're going to take care of Bravo. It's a BC hold for Fnatic. They Oh, they got one ticket left, and it's looking like Epsilon is rushing nope. onto Bravo, and they're going to take control of it. This might end in favor of But Epsilon. no, no, they have one on A right now. Oh, unfixed! Why didn't you clean the burn? Oh, my God. That was precious seconds right there that he could not have been wasting. Unfixed just lost it, maybe, for his teammate. Oh! He could have had the burn going in their favor. Look at the tip. Oh, my God. That was so close. Unfixed there. Oh my god, why? He had it, it was so close. That was an amazing game, one to three. Three tickets, wow. three tickets. And I wow. think you're absolutely right. So they had the chance to get the two cap burn a little bit quicker. And Unfix just kind of delayed and hopped off the burn and just lost precious milliseconds even to give the win to Epsilon. Oh that my right goodness. Was, that's as close as you get it right there. I mean, Unfixed. I, I hate to pull him out, but I mean, if he would have just been on that burn, finished it, he could have won that round for his team. Oh my God, that was so close. One to three tickets, or three tickets overall, in favor of Epsilon by the skin of their teeth. Amazing, amazing comeback because Epsilon was actually behind for the majority of that game. That was just huge. That was huge. Wow. And and, but see, that's the thing. As exciting and as trying as that round was for these teams, that's still just the first round on the first map of this finals. And we've seen Fnatic go down in a round previously by many more tickets, including to Epsilon. So you got to think that neither team has to be confident here. It's anybody's game here, even on this first map locker. So we will switch sides with Epsilon only a three-ticket lead after a hell of a round. Brett, what do you expect from this second round? Um, honestly, <clears throat> that first round doesn't even count. The only reason that, you know, if it comes down that close, the only reason you want to be the one that wins it is just so if that we have another really, really, really close match, then it, you know, you'll be able to have a win underneath your belt. So that mat, that round basically doesn't even matter. It's, it's not even there. It's like a wash. Um, and, it's, it's, you're even Steven. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, it's really going to come down to this map. And, and one of the things that we have to point out is 
like you were saying. You know, uh, Fnatic has been one of those teams, and Epsilon, the same thing. They've been, both of these guys have lost the first rounds, but come back and just overwhelmingly won on the second one. Now, I don't think that's going to happen on this particular match. Uh, by the way, guys, we are not live on this round. We're going to be waiting for one of the Epsilon players to get in. Yes, yeah, we will be waiting Gera. for Duke to come back in. Oh, Duke, and he yeah, has me. just now made it in. There so we, we will be restarting twice to get back in uh, for this game. So I, I, I got to say, it's, uh, it's, it's anybody's match right here. Me personally, from the games that I have per, that I have seen cast and, and from, from the matches that I have seen, I'm going to give the edge to Epsilon uh, just because I've seen them do really, really, really well on lockers before. Not to say Fnatic isn't good on lockers. I just think that Epsilon has the slight edge. My own opinion on that one. What do you think, Mess? You, you know, I, I haven't seen these guys as much as you, so I'm certainly going to defer to your opinion. I, I certainly agree that the first round is basically a wash, and at this point it's going to be up to either team to take that next step and make either an adjustment or turn it up in the fragging department to really establish yourself in this finals matchup. It's anybody's game in this first map. And the second map, which I believe will be Goldmud, is that correct? Is going to yes. be slightly different from this type of gameplay where you're just constantly in the action and Goldmud a bit more uh, non-traditional with the building gameplay. And well, the actually, Goldmud kind of is, is a happy medium in between a lockers map and a... Uh, and a, like a, a Zavod map where a Zavod uh, or a Paracel you, Storm. You can have it to where you're flipping spawns all the time, and it's very hard to lock down lanes. But at the same team, same time, from what we saw from the last match that we we cast on it, was that there's a possibility that you can get them on the flip side, on that C side, and lock it down. So it kind of floats in between. It, it, it's it's a weird one. So uh, we got one more restart that we're going to be having, guys, on this. One more restart, admin. You can do it. And Uno Mas, we need one more guy. There we there go. There we go. So hey, we got this one bravo. This, this will be live. And uh, for, uh, for for the guy in chat right here, I'm sorry that I say lockers, even though it says Operation Locker. But if you want to get technical about it, I should be saying Operation Locker every time. <laughs> so you're going to have to deal with lockers for now, broski. I'm sorry. We, but, we talk uh, so anyways. fast. I mean, we, we got we to cut things down. We got to keep it concise so we can keep up with the action. <laughs> so anyways, uh, here we are. We're going to be having Fnatic on the Russian side. Epsilon will be on the U.S. side. And uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't really catch a whole lot of that first breakout as I was still loading up into the server. So it'll be interesting to see what we see out of this one. Uh, we have seen multiple kinds of breakouts where we have two aggressive push for both A and B. Uh, we have also seen a standard push where we're going to have a two go out C, one J, two to A. And then basically you mirror that uh, on the, the U.S. side where you have two going to A, one B, two going out to C. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what we come out of this. I would imagine that Epsilon might be pushing out towards C fairly hard. And here we go. We do have the breakout. We see three heading towards Alpha. We got two from Fnatic heading towards C. And actually, nobody, nobody from Epsilon is heading out towards C. It yeah. looks like they're going to make a push for A through J. Uh, that's an interesting breakout, wouldn't you say, Brett? Well, uh, it, it can work. If, they, if Akash can catch... Uh, the Fnatic player who, who is uh, Winghaven off guard, uh, but he's already wasting oh, too down. much time on trying to deal with Hill. So Hill was able to take him out. That was going to be hit, uh, unfixed. And uh, Epsilon is in a little bit of a weird position, though. They are they do have A completely surrounded here. So if they're able... Oh, oh Garar goes down. Uh, Core is going to get shot from the side. He goes down from cut. So now they're not in a good position. They are actually all bottlenecked over here into metal detectors. Um, Fnatic could go in for a nice back rage here. Unfortunately. I don't really know why they're not. They may have their, their comms just a little bit uh, weirded out. But uh, we'll be seeing a free entry into Tut. And uh, Epsilon make, looking to make a big play into A. Oh, and Balutaj is right on top of that. He does take one down in Cut, retreats back. It looks like we are also going to see a push from Detectors as Balutaj makes short work of that. That's three kills in a row for Balutaj. Can he make it four? Oh, no. It looks like his teammate. And there's a huge spawn by Epsilon in the, uh, looks like the kitchen med bay area, and they are going to take control of Alpha, just winning the day by a bit of a Zerg push there, Brett. Yeah, Winghaven going to be shifting over like he has been the whole entire time. Um, he's been really the guy that uh, makes that play over there onto that B flag if A is going to be taken. Um, but we do have some random spawns back here by Epsilon. It's going to be Akash, uh, and he's going to try and clean this up. I don't know if he's going to be able to take out Unfixed, but Duke PT coming in at the last second will be able to make something happen out of it. And as that is happening, uh, we have Winghaven and Too Easy making their play on A. Uh, it looks like they will be able to take out Core, and Mayek is the only one that's going to be left standing, and he is very, very hurt with that nade spam coming in. 
And at this point, Fnatic looks to be on a roll, only losing six tickets thus far. 194 to 166. Looking at the frag count, it's 5 and 1 for Valitage, 4 and 1 for Too Easy. But uh, Epsilon's kind of meeting him in the frag department. It's just really nice performance by Fnatic at the start of his second round. Well, you know, this is exactly what we saw in the first round. We saw uh, we saw Epsilon going out to a very quick deficit um, where Fnatic was really, really rolling on them. It seemed like they were just going to get that lead further and further and further out there. So, uh, And Epsilon was able to eventually come back and win it. So I, I, it's not out of the possibility of them coming back. Although I do have to mention that, uh, you know, Epsilon, uh, Akash, is not really doing so hot right now. He's only 0-3. Uh, so that is not really helping him right, not right now. But uh, Epsilon managing to get that two cap, uh, the A and B. So uh, if Akash can start heating up on those frags, I think they will be just fine in holding this. And it looks like a going to be a three-man push by Fnatic on the backside. Alpha got Wing Haven behind Med Med Lab, dropping some nades out. Uh, it looks like C is actually going to be contested. Epsilon being aggressive here. It's Akash out on the C flag, trying to stay alive on the Bernies. I'm not sure what he was thinking there. He kind of made exposed himself there as Fnatic pushes in on Alpha. They're going to take control of that. Perhaps a f no, not a flip flop. Fnatic is going to get C. They're going to get A. So it's going to be an A C hold for Fnatic. Let's watch from Gara. He's he's in cut. He's in J area. Nade in his face and unfixed. Takes him down. Nice one. I'm unfixed there. Yeah, and Epsilon looking a little bit uh, shaken up there as they're, they're starting to get wiped out a lot more. Uh, Fnatic is going to be spread out really nice along this map here as they got a really good line going on. Although, missing their shots over there onto A, Garg making basically a free entry in there onto the Alpha flag. Unfixed, though, might be trying to go around for a back uh, a back rage. Uh, he's actually a little bit uh, unknowing of what he's going to do. Duke BT coming around the corner. He's able to take him down. It's like, uh, Bursky, you got to make a decision faster than that. <laughs> easy going to try and save C, but uh, now we're going to be seeing Epsilon flipping the sides of the map. They will be taking A and C flag, um, and uh, should be setting up here in just a second. I would like to see uh, one more player over there into Med Lab, which, okay, we do have Epsilon shifting down now into Med. It's going to be Garar and Akosh to try and hold off any kind of push coming into A. And this is a great position for Epsilon to be in. It's only 144 to 155. Again, the previous round basically doesn't count. Only a three-ticket win for Epsilon here. It's an AC hold as Gara is at the backside of Jay with a nade out towards cut area. It looks like he might be trying to flank a... No, there's no one there. His teammate took him out. Morte there, perhaps. Can he t there's another nade out. Trading nades. It's the trade nade. <laughs> neither, neither guy wants to push there. Duke PT coming around to finish him with the flank. Oh, but he goes down from Bravo. Still holding on to A and C or Epsilon. And it's 144 to 142. Extremely close game again in this second round. Just like you said, Brett, that previous lead by Fnatic just vanishes in an instant. Yeah, and, you know, and that, that's one of the things about domination is that the, the ticket advantage can flip-flop very fast with these kinds of teams. I mean, they just need to get a two-cap in their favor for just a few moments, and then all of a sudden, bam, they're right back into this match. So you really, really uh, aren't going to be seeing, you know, some desperation moves happen until you get about uh, 60 to 70 ticket leads going on, which I doubt we're going to be seeing very much of in this matchup, as now we'll be taking the lead for the first time in this matchup before this round uh, is 143 to 126, so Fnatic... Going to be making a play on the C with a two-man push. Oh, Ooh, nice save core. there by a, a core who uh, might be able to clean this up. Yeah, they're going to be able to clean that up, no problem, as a good uh, tray or a good shift there by Akash will be able to uh, take him down. And now they're going to be possibly making a play onto B flag. Yes, we got Fnatic getting a couple of back spawns, but Duke PT going to try to cut it off. No, he goes down to two of them. It's a two-on-one that he just could not win. And you said Akash. He is actually heated up. Now six and five as he was previously without a kill. It looks like a bit of a push by Fnatic onto Alpha. They do go down. We're going to watch from Unfixed Perspective. we got two at Detectors. Two easy extras. Watch from him. Morte goes down. Winghaven is also there. There's too many nades in his face, but there's a two-man spawn over a cut. Morte. Morte takes down one. He's going to revive his teammate. He takes down Mayak. There's another one in Kitchen. Takes down a second. There's Duke PT there. Can he get him with the pistol? And a nice just Zerg attack by Fnatic onto the Alpha flag. It looks like they are going to take control of it. But Epsilon jumping out to a huge lead here. 137 to 96. Well, th throughout that whole entire exchange, which we still do have uh, one player from Epsilon, it's going to be Mayak, who's still over there onto A. Through that entire exchange, we did have a nice shift over here from Epsilon. Unfortunately, they never got onto the flag, and we hang even. We did a really nice uh, random spawn back there, was able to protect it. So it's going to be Duke PT and we Winghaven with Duke coming out on top, and they will be able to flash B down. 
And uh, we also have, uh, it looks like, a player over in the Snake. Mayak is still up and alive oh. in the Snake. Karar are going to be spawning in, as well as Corso. They're going to be in a really good position to set up for a triple cap here if uh, Fnatic is not careful. Yeah, extremely exciting. Second round, 127 to 89. We're watching from Unfixed Perspective getting a spawn on the A flag. He is in the corner. They're going to try and reinforce this. Right now, it's the only flag that Fnatic holds. It's a two-man push by Epsilon being extremely aggressive. Take, looking to take the A flag, but meanwhile, C has been nuked by Winghaven all in his lonesome. More tape is here to support him, but he's going to rotate from the backside, and it's an AB hold for Epsilon here. 125 to 80 tickets, but Fnatic with a push through J. Let's see if they're going to be able to overwhelm Epsilon and take out Alpha. Yeah, right now they have that chance of doing it, but oh, losing their player over there. That was Duke PT, uh, able to take him down and get the res as well. Garar does end up going down, uh, so it will start to burn down. But the response from Meg and Duke are just too good right now. Able to shift back over, should be stopping this burn right now. Oh, um, yeah, there, oh wow, no, not stopping that burn because Valutasia coming in from the backside will be cleaning that up. So nice push there, and now Fnatic is going to be pushing B flag. So uh, we're basically going to be seeing Epsilon pushed outside. Oh no, Akash going to be coming back around. Will he be able to stop this Valutasia and Mort pushing outside? And yeah, that is going to be stopped right there. C flag will be going into the possession of Epsilon. But uh, if you look at the KDs right now, Duke PT 20 and 6. Going hard. H-A-M. Well, just what I said right there. You know, they're probably the best fragger on Epsilon. And then Valutasia at 16 and 10. Probably the best pra fragger on Fnatic. I would say those two guys are the best fraggers in the game right now. And uh, definitely showing why as they are just beefing it up through this entire matchup. B flag is going to be heavily contested. Looks like Core should be able to finish the burn right now. Fnatic going to be making a play on the backside. Looks like he's going to be trying to go through B stairs. It's going to be Valutasia down below. Duke PT and Core uh, should be able to uh, clean that up fairly easily. Too easy going to be coming in though like a madman. And we might be seeing Akash dropping down. Yes, he's going to be able to come around the corner. Takes out too easy, no problem. And uh, so I think, I think they are going to be fine. Uh, yeah, it looks like B has been reinforced by Epsilon, but meanwhile, it looks like C has been unchecked. Fnatic Winghaven taking it out there on his own, but a huge push for man by Epsilon onto Alpha. Let's see what shakes down. Oh, two of them go down already. Duke BT is there, coming in with the pistol. Valutasia takes him down, so it looks like A is going to stay under control of Epsilon. We're watching from Valutasia's perspective. He is in the med lab there. He's low on health, dropping a med pack. He's got med uh, nades in his face. Too many of them. It goes down to Maic. Nice play by Mayak there. They're pushing into Alpha. It looks like perhaps they're going to take control of it. It's a three-man push by Epsilon on Alpha. But all three flags are being contested right now. Gera taking control of C and Fnatic unfixed taking Bravo. So it's an AC hold for Epsilon here with a roughly 40-ticket lead. Looking strong here in this second round, Brad. You know, I'd like to say that, you know, Epsilon, they can relax a little bit right now, but they can't. Fnatic is making another play over here onto C-Flag. They have a lot of map control right here. Look at this. They got one on C. They have one on fans. They have one in mid. And they also have one back <clears throat> at the random B spawns. And th th that's they still have room for another player to spawn in. So uh, they're sitting really, really, really nice right now, uh, honestly, throughout the entire map here. But Epsilon's going to have to make a play here pretty soon because, as we saw in that last game, these tickets, they can flop very, very fast. You know, if they hold these two cap for too long, Epsilon, they won't be having, they won't be having a uh, 40 ticket lead. Yeah, absolutely. It's 79 to 39 here, and we're actually seeing an Epsilon rota rotation to C, but a Fnatic rotation to A. We could see a bit of a flip-flop, but then there's going to be perhaps a showdown on Bravo as well. Two flags being contested. Oh, Unfixed taking out Akosh from above. He didn't even see that one coming. Brains him right in the back of the head. It's an AB hold for Fnatic, looking to make up roughly that 40-ticket difference here, and we do see Valutasia Morte and Winghaven on Alpha. Epsilon Mayak pushing in through detectors. It's a one and push on Alpha. Oh, and it looks like Mayak does take down one. Oh, he gets taken down from above Bravo. It's Epsilon Guerra moving into Bravo himself. He sees Unfixed there. Can't quite take him out behind the pillar. Nade out. He's got a drop. And A is also being contested. And it looks like Akash is going to pick that one up. So really bit of a, a, a little bit of mayhem going on right now, Brett. 
Yeah, a lot of mayhem going on right now as B-Flag is going to be going back into the favor of Epsilon here. Wing Aven, the only one uh, that's going to be back in to, to try and save this, but uh, it will be able to stop the burn, actually. Valutasia doing a really good job of uh, getting that last pick up there. It's going to be Mayak and Valutasia uh, going up against each other, but um, they did end up getting out A, which I do like that trade, getting that A flag burn, and they will be able to get B, so the two flag advantage will still be uh, swinging back in the favor of Epsilon here, not finishing it out actually. Yeah, we do see so three of Epsilon taken out, taking control of Bravo, but a quick rotation by too easy for Fnatic. He is on the Bravo burn. It's a stalemate here. No, he, he is going to take it. It looks like Fnatic might get control of Bravo here. A and C. Uh, oh, it looks like Epsilon has dropped him, man. This is not yep. good for them. They're in the lead by 40 tickets, but the last thing you want to do against a team like Fnatic is go down and let them have a power play to perhaps get back in this round, Brett. Yeah, DuPT has been having crash issues for even the last match. He had a lot of crash issues, so uh, this is not something that uh, is uh, is new, and it's very, very bad in this matchup. We're having a one-on-one -on -one over here by B Flag, Grar, and Too Easy going back and forth, stopping that burn. So right now, there's no t that that's a good thing because right now there's no ticket lead in anybody's favor, which is exactly what Epsilon needs right now to, in order to get Duke in the server. So they need to get him in right now. As we said before, he's top fragger for their team, and they need that fragging power as uh, we're going to be seeing C getting contested right now, uh, and uh, they're just holding on to B. They don't want to be uh, stuck back in his back B spawns. This is like a death trap uh, right here, but Fnatic, for whatever reason, yeah, they may be feeling a little bit confident they, they because they took C and abandoned A. Completely open. Completely wide open as uh, Epsilon wisely. Johnny on the spot, three-man push on the alpha, despite the fact that they were down a man. And PT does get back in the server, and they are looking in solid position here, 55 to 13 in favor of Epsilon. The Telltale Music cues, but it's a one-on-two over on Bravo flag is Valutasia. Oh, he can't quite take out Mayak, who does take him out from above. Looks like Epsilon is going to take control of Bravo. It's going to be an AV hold for Epsilon. Fnatic unfixed coming through Jay, but he's going to get shot from behind. Got to drop a med pack. 54 to 9 in favor of Fnatic. They're in desperation mode. If they go below three tickets, it will be a map win for Epsilon here. And it's looking like that is going to be the case. Five, four, three, and there you have it. Epsilon taking map one on lockers. What a match, Brett. Yeah, that was uh, an amazing, amazing uh, game right there. Um, unfortunately, uh, we have some players in here that are complaining about the lag. Yes, lag is bad. Uh, Garar had some really, really bad issues with some high, high pings. Uh, in fact, he's, he's out of the server right now, maybe to try and fix that issue. Duke PT just getting in after that crash. And uh, honestly, that right there was huge. Epsilon coming from behind in both rounds, both rounds coming from behind and able to take the wins. And in that second round, they took it in a very commanding fashion, even though they were only playing with four players. So uh, GG's to Epsilon. And, uh, you know, maybe uh, maybe Fnatic, this is their night to go down. I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. We Perhaps a chink in the armor. They were taken out recently by UMAV, and they've been going head-to-head -head with Epsilon for quite some time, but Fnatic generally coming out on the winning side of those uh, engagements, but perhaps Epsilon now perhaps trying to get over the hump against a Fnatic team that's had their number for quite some time. And, you know, we'll move on to Goldmud Railway, which a little bit different. As Brett said, it's a bit of a hybrid between a map like a Dawnbreaker or a Lockers and a kind of merry-go-round flag hoppy map like a Paracel Storm or a Zavod. So who do you think Goldmud Railway favors? As I believe this was Epsilon's pick, I think. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't know. Is, was it Epsilon's pick? Uh, Chad mentioned that he believed that Fnatic's pick was a locker, so I'm, okay, that's, well, that's my story I, and I'm sticking if, to if it. If that's the, if that's the case, then I think that, uh, Epsilon will do quite well on, on Goldmode Railway. Um, I've seen him play Goldmode Railway. In fact, they're the ones that, uh, really showed a lot of the NA teams how to play Goldmode Railway, um, from the, from the match versus Exodus NA. Um, and that was, uh, uh that was basically making them spawn on that seaside and, and ha forcing them to cross that open ground to try and get, get uh, to that A and B flags. And, uh, you basically just sit up, uh, two over into gray building. You set one over, uh, onto, uh, uh side streets over there by B and you sit one back at uh, a, a house and then you have a floater that basically just goes and pesters uh, C flag the entire time and it works 
Yes, we are again, folks. Just for anyone who may have joined us, we you know we want to let you know what's going on. It's a gaming grids five v five domination tournament. It's the New Year's Bash. Fifteen hundred dollars on the line. Twelve hundred of that going to the winner of this match right here that you are watching. Second place team getting three hundred dollars, and of course the MVP of the match getting an additional one hundred dollars. Epsilon winning map one operation lockers. Uh, getting by on the skin of their teeth in the first round, three tickets to zero. And in the second round, a bit stronger performance, winning by over 50 tickets despite being down early to one of the best teams, if not the best team in the world at the moment, in Fnatic. So we are not live here on the second map. It's going to be Goldmud Railway, waiting for a couple of Epsilon guys to bit, get back in the server. So chat, all you guys watching, what do you guys, what do you guys think? Do you think we'll see a tiebreaker? Do you think... Fnatic has it in them to overcome Epsilon on Gold Mud Railway and force a tiebreaker matchup here in the finals. You let us know. What do you think, Brett? Do you think do you think we'll see a TB? Do you think we'll see a third map? Uh, it is very possible. I would not take it out of uh, the possibility because we do have um, uh, we do have. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to uh, tweet out some stuff here. Uh -huh. uh, we do have uh, a Fnatic that is going to be playing on this, and Fnatic has shown that they already know how to play Goldman Railway. They played it against AAA, and uh, they are basically showing the same exact strats that we were talking about before. Uh, you, you take A and B flag, you, you set up, and then you have one one guy that basically just kind of pesters C the entire time. And it, what it does is it forces the spawns back behind Perch. And uh, not only is that such a long run distance to try to get down to C if it is flashing, but what it also does is that it forces you out into the open there's a lot of open ground there that you can get shot from gray house and you can get shot from uh, side streets there so um you know both of these teams are going to be very very knowledgeable on what to do on this map it's just going to be who can make the least amount of mistakes yeah it's going to come down to execution when you are at this level the top level the finals of a match like this the caliber of these teams they are so close in skill level and in preparation, and they know each other so well, having played each other so many times before, that it really does come down to those individual battles, winning those 1v2s, 1v3s occasionally, making those big plays to get your team over the hump in those uh, clutch situations. And again, we do have Epsilon in the lead by one map. Fnatic having to win this one on Goldmund Railway will have two rounds on this map. Aggregate ticket will win the map, and potentially we'll see a tiebreaker. But while we wait, let's talk a little bit again about Gaming Grids, the uh, gracious uh, organization that has hosted this tournament and has put this on for the Battlefield 4 community. So we've got the Gaming Grids, basically the website. You want to check it out, GamingGrids.com. What they do is they hold all sorts of tournaments. Of course, we're having a team tournament here, you know, a bracket tournament. But we also have open play tournaments. Now, they did one which was sponsored, I think it was Christmas Day, and they did one right around New Year's as well, where there was no entry fee. You could go to the website and sign up, and you it, it was played out over four hours on a specific gaming server. It was basically like a domination pub where everybody could come and play, and I think the top 15 of that received a portion of the pot, and the pot is guaranteed in a tournament like that. Now, they also have open play hourly tournaments where you pay a small fee, and it's the same scenario where you uh, go play on a, a public server and you just try to gain good stats and play well over that time. And the top 60% of the players in those tournaments actually receive a payout. So, you know, it's really not necessarily easy, but there's a good chance for a lot of people to win some money in that. We've actually had in some, some of these previous tournaments a lot of really talented players win some decent amount of money. In fact, Fanatic Valutaja, who's in this match in the finals, has won over $300 in these tournaments. We've seen Andrew Pasher, NM, and I think uh, Vivacity Powell win a couple hundred bucks as well. So, you know, it's one of those things that it's really easy to do. You're pubbing it anyways. You may as well just sign up on this tournament, go play on these specific servers, test your medal against some of the best competitive players in the community, and perhaps win some money while you're at it. Yeah, absolutely. Now, guys, while we are waiting for these teams to get in, definitely hit that share button down there. Tweet it out. Uh, share it on Facebook. Uh, tell your friends about it. Make sure that you get this out there because uh, this is just plain old good battlefield here. And uh, we want to make sure that everybody can see it. Uh, definitely do so. You can also check it out on GamingGrids.tv where we have all of the VODs posted up. 
uh, a little bit later. You can also check out the second uh, stream, which is going to be hosted by Chadman and Dogbert. They are going to be casting this very match right now. So if you just don't like us, uh, <laughs> or you want to watch both of them at the same time, you can do that at GamingGrids.tv. Um, also, uh, check us out on Twitter at GamingGrids. And then, as Matt said, check out our website, www.gaminggrids.com. You can also check out myself on Twitter, at BrettFX. You can check out Mess at uh, our Mess BF. So uh, please do so. Uh, we cast multiple leagues, multiple uh, events, so we're always going to be out there. And uh, as I said before, share this with everybody. This is Epsilon and Fnatic. These are the two best teams right now. Yeah, They are definitely creating a show for us. If anybody <laughs> that you know enjoys Battlefield, especially on the competitive front. If they're pubbing right now, if they're just hanging out playing another game, if they're on Steam, let them know you are missing a show right now. you got to come over and watch this Epsilon Fnatic match. Epsilon taking a quick lead, 1-0, winning the first map. But Fnatic looking to respond here on Gold Mud Railway. We're just waiting for a couple of the Epsilon players to get in the server. We'll get the second map underway. Looking for another exciting matchup. Um, Brett, after that first map, Given that we are, you know, we are tasked with picking the MVP of this match, anyone jump out as a front runner in that thus far? Anyone we should keep an eye on as we move forward to perhaps be that MVP winner of that extra hundred dollars in this uh, tournament? You know what? I've done MVP stuff before, and uh, I am not even going to say anything until the end of the tournament. <laughs> keep it close to the vest. I can respect that, Brett. So. Uh, you know, sound off in the chat, folks. We definitely would like to hear your opinion in that respect. You guys are watching the, pretty much the same thing that we are. So if you got an opinion on who you think is carrying the day for their team, regardless of who wins, you know, again, we, we have to stress this. It doesn't have to go to a player on the winning team. Let us know who you think perhaps could be the MVP of this finals matchup. We are still yeah, waiting. Yeah, so I think we have everybody in the server, so... Uh, we're just as soon as we get the go ahead from both teams that they are good to go. We will be going live. Um, we do apologize for the slight little wait, but we did have a couple of crashes, and these teams have been playing for quite some time today. So uh, I believe we got started at four o'clock. It is now nine. Yeah, so five and a half hours. For five hours. So <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, you know, I'd like to say that uh, you know the teams are in the same situation, but then again, these guys have had breaks. Whereas uh, we've kind of been uh, muscling through it the entire time. But you know what? Hey. Hey, enough about that. That's why we're uh, here. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But uh, anyways, we do appreciate everybody coming out and watching. We really do. Follow that channel. We will be having more events in the future. Check out the website, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, but uh, we should – I'm going to try and contact uh, somebody to make sure what exactly is going on. Yeah, in the meantime, let me talk real quickly while we've got a few moments until this starts about what Gaming Grids has in store for us. Now, we're already seeing tournaments here. We've had the open play stuff, all the stuff we've already talked about. But what is on the horizon? Well, they've got a scrim fighter and a matchmaking system. Now, if you guys were at all familiar with the Battlefield 3 competitive scene, there was a website called Gamers Portal, which had something similar where it was very easy for teams to show up, sign up for a scrim, and get a match underway. They're going to have something like that. They're also going to be a pug system which kind of interacts with the scrim finder where players can kind of consolidate a team if you don't have a full roster and get in on a competitive game there. There's going to be recruitment tools, you know, obviously if teams are looking or if players are looking, try to get you in touch with a team of your caliber so you can play. Also, something I'm really excited about, I'm sure Brett would be too, being a shoutcaster, is a shoutcaster platform where what they're going to do is you're going to try to pair uh, shoutcasters with teams looking for a match or looking for uh, coverage. Now, this could be a scrim, this could be a pug even, this could be a, a, maybe a match or a ladder match that's not being covered by predetermined shoutcasters. It's a great way for for shoutcasters or streamers who are looking to get their foot in the door into that type of thing to test their metal without necessarily having to worry about ruining a really top-level game, you know, because it can be a little intimidating when you first start. But that's something to be on the lookout for as we are restarting this map, and I think we are going to go live here on the second map in the finals, Fnatic versus Epsilon. Yep, we should be going live right now. 
as yeah, it is live on restart. So 32 seconds, we will be getting this match underway. Uh, we are going to be having Epsilon spawning in on the Chinese side, which is going to have one heck of a run ahead of them. Uh, what are they going to do? Are they going to be doing the fanatically str fanatic strat where they're going to be seeing five players all going over to A? Or are we going to be seeing more of what Triple A was doing where we had two players branching off, going into dorm? One is going to be going over there into mid, trying to get a couple of cross shots going on to uh, uh, on these uh, fanatic players that are going from C to B, and then two going down to A. Not really sure. I would suggest pushing everybody down into A flag. To be completely honest, I mean, there's no reason not to. But uh, it looks like we are going to be seeing a uh, uh, three, four players are going to be sitting up there. Epsilon will be sh uh, shifting down. Duke, no, Duke does end up going down from Winghaven right now. So uh, once again, C and B are going to be quickly going into the favor of Fnatic uh, and it's wrapping up quite a few of the Epsilon players over here onto dorms. Yeah, it's surprising. We're seeing a three-man push by Epsilon over on C, taking a bit of their time. Oh, and too easy playing patient, taking out one of Epsilon from behind. BC hold for Fnatic. Oh, another. Nope. Too easy. Can't quite take him out. Let's go watch from it looks like Unfix is coming around the backside of Bravo. He's going to try to Hold onto this B flag. It's a BC hold right now for Fnatic. After losing map one, they're going to want to gain some momentum here. But look at Fnatic being aggressive too easy on the backside of A and kind of catching Epsilon sleeping there. No one is there to respond yet. Oh, there is Gara. Finally takes takes him out and reclaims A, but still Alpha or Charlie and Bravo in favor of Fnatic. Yeah, Fnatic going to be coming out to a really quick lead here, 198 to 178, about 20 tickets ahead. And uh, they're, they're looking really, really solid at the moment. Uh, but uh, they did get some very, very bad uh, perch spawns. And that's going to hurt hurt them a little bit. But they should be able to get on over here to B flag, get some random spawns going on. There you go. We have two players now uh, back over here onto B. So the Epsilon will be able to even it up. Uh, right now, but uh, Fnatic going to be positioning themselves to try on a very strong B push as we're seeing uh, I believe that was uh, too easy able to take out Mayek. Duke is going to try and come down there by himself and hold on to it. He's going to be able to pick up one uh, but he ends up going down himself. The uh, the top fragger for Epsilon is 5-in-1 <laughs> here, but was just not able to hold on. Yeah, Duke looking really nice right now. And Winghaven, the only one left up for Epsilon, or excuse me, for Fnatic, as he does go down. And it's looking like Epsilon is going for the triple cap. They are moving in. Epsilon, Duke, PT, two of Epsilon's partner on the backside. He's being aggressive, going straight after him. Takes down Valutaja, comes back to take the alpha flag all on his lonesome. Duke, PT, going hard for his team. But it looks like C might, nope, C was contested momentarily. And it's a triple cap for Epsilon, jumping out to roughly a 20 ticket lead here at the beginning of the round on the second map. Looks like they're coming on the backside of Dirt to reinforce Bravo. We are seeing most of uh, Fnatic spawning on the backside of C. It looks like Unfixed coming in. Oh, can he take out Akash? No, he can't. Akash finishing him off, reinforcing Charlie. Nope, it does look like Fnatic does have control of Charlie. Yeah, and actually we're seeing Fnatic losing out on a majority of their uh, frags. Look at that, Winghaven, one and five. Mort, one and three. Unfixed, Unfixed. Four, four and four. four. That is very uncharacteristic of these teams right now. Uh, five and no to Akash. So Akash really proven his worth right now to his teammates. Uh, A-Flag is going to get burned down by uh, Winghaven right now. He's 140 to 171. Epsilon with a little bit of breathing room. they got about 30 tickets ahead right now. Uh, sitting pretty nice. If they can hold on to this A-B push, which it looks like they will be able to. Valutasia, though, uh, should be able to cap B really quickly. Mayek needs to get in there and uh, make something happen. Uh, but uh, Akash going to be reinforcing it along with Duke PT from A. Uh, and they might be able to clean it out, though Epsilon, uh, or I'm sorry, a Fnatic now has control of Grey Building. And that's one of those spots that has just been so powerful on this map that if you control Grey Building, you can really control the flow of the map. Yes, it's that central linchpin, if you will, of this map. If you see too easy hanging out in that great building, getting a couple of uh, pot shots out on the Epsilon guy spawning on Perch. But he is getting shot from the A building. And we do see C is going to be taking control by Epsilon. That's Akash pushing up there. Winghaven trying to respond, but he's not going to be... Oh! Can't quite get the kill there. It is a BC hold still for Fnatic. I'm not really sure what happened there. It looks like Epsilon was in position to take C, but they kind of decided to... To abandon that. Oh, there's three men in the B building. Valutasia takes Duke PT down. Coming around the side, Gara takes him out. So it looks like Epsilon is going to try to take control of Bravo. It's a three-man push over here. 
Yeah. Well, you know, basically we're going to be having a trading in their favor of Fnatic uh, as it was wide open. But the problem with that is that they did have some some perch spawns up there from Epsilon. They brought down, got into C flag, and now look at the random spawns over there for a Fnatic. Three of them are going to be over here into dorms. What can you do from dorms? Really, not a whole lot. They need to be reinforcing somewhere else um, as uh, unfixed as well as too easy are going to be pressured over here onto this A flag. I think that Epsilon should be able to hold on. It's uh, just going to be Valutatia against two. Yeah, and they're going to be able to hold on to that, no problem. So it is going to go back to a CB push or CB hold for Epsilon, and they still have the lead. Not by much. I mean, it's only by about 15 tickets now. But, um, you know, they, they still have that in their back pocket. And remember, Epsilon can afford to lose, uh, can lose this map. So they're not going to be as stressed as Fnatic is. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Fanatics uh, essentially backs up against the wall in this match. They have this map. They have to win it, otherwise the win will go to Epsilon as Akos goes down. It's a 139, 119, 20 ticket lead for Epsilon. We're watching from Duke PT's perspective, coming on the backside to see which is Nuke. He sees two in front of him. Oh, that's Winghaven takes him down with a quickness, and it's looking like perhaps. Fnatic trying to get a triple cap here, and this they're actually in a good position to hold this for a little while, Brett. Look at that spread and look at the spawns for Epsilon. Very unfortunate. Could be a huge swing for Fnatic here. Yeah, absolutely. And this is this is one of the things that we point out in lockers. You know, just because you got a 20-30 ticket lead does not mean anything. Uh, these things can flip in a moment's notice, and that's exactly what we're going to be seeing here. As it's almost going to be evened up, Epsilon should, or uh, Fnatic should be able to take the lead here in just a few moments. And uh, they're doing is. really, really good on their frags. They're starting to heat up a little bit more. As we're seeing Valutation now, 11-6, and six, uh, unfixed, or um, uh, was able to get out of that, or no, I'm sorry, Wehaven was able to get out of that slump, get a couple of kills underneath his belt. So uh, they're not they're not losing out entirely on their frags. They're able to really to do something there. And honestly, Duke hasn't really been able to to get let loose here yeah we're actually seeing Akos stepping up big for his team he's seven and four right now as it looks like they're actually going to try to hold on to c but fanatic was a, did a nice job of holding on to a and b when they got that triple cap they could essentially conceded c because as you've said before this ab hold is extremely strong especially if you can control that a building his core eats a nade right in the face but the two of them him and mayak are able to take control of that great building this could be oh no, it's still a showdown in there. His core goes down. Meg is there for the revive. It's more him and Morte. It's a showdown. He does win that battle and a spawn on him as Epsilon will take control of the gray building. But meanwhile, Fnatic has spun, uh, fanned out and taken the triple cap. So perhaps too much effort exerted to try to get that central building. Well, right now they're going to be able to get onto B flag. They should be able to uh, get onto this A burn here pretty soon. C is going to be a one-on-one, -on -one and they just clean that out. So they're going to be able to get a two flag advantage here, whether uh, Fnatic likes it or not. Oh, but we do have a nice lucky spawn there by Valutasia. Going to be spent up behind on Perch by uh, by C flag. So uh, they should be able to drop down. Well, I said it was lucky back when I thought they were going to be able to hold onto A flag. <laughs> Unfortunately, they were not. So this is actually a bad spawn for them. If they were able to hold on to A, that would have put them in a really good position, actually, to push back down into B flag and uh, re reacquire that triple cap. It's going to be 97 to 78 in favor of Fnatic by 20 tickets. So uh, once again, Fnatic has taken the lead, um, but we'll see for how long as that two flag cap is going to be going into the favor of, of Epsilon here. They're spread out really nice. They got one in gray building, two over there in the A house, one sitting in the B house, and one over there on the side street. So uh, they're, they're basically in all the positions that they need to be. I would like to see them kind of pressure C a little bit. Yeah, we are seeing Morte trying to get up in, in the gray house. He's I think he's going to catch one sleeping. Yes, he does take down poor EU from behind. That's a nice job there. But they need to get someone on the burn here as Epsilon has done a good job of holding A and B, basically flip-flopping what Fnatic had. We're seeing looks like a, a push from the rock. Oh, no, Unfix gets taken out from the side there. Winghaven is also there. AK, Akos takes him down, and it looks like Epsilon, yes, is going to reinforce Bravo and maintain control. Fnatic Morte is still stuck in that gray building all in his lonesome. It's 76 to 74, so just like that, the 20 ticket lead of Fnatic vanishes as Epsilon is able to hold on to this AB. Yeah, they are. Uh, and it looks like Epsilon is just going to be able to tighten this up. And this is what exactly what I was saying before. 
every single time they random spawn, they spawn across the map. Now, unfortunately, Epsilon wasn't in a position to capitalize on that, as we do see two players over there into gray building. One now is going to be uh, up on step up uh, over there onto uh, by B flag. So they should be able to make a play here pretty soon. But honestly, Epsilon is just on fire right now. They're making a lot of their shots. They're, they're connecting with just about everything. As you said before, Akash is really heating up. Uh, Mayak is also heating up at five or 15 and 5, as well as Duke PT just being 16 and 9. So they have three guys right now that are on their shots. And when you have that in your back pocket, that is a good thing right there. you got to be feeling really, really good. And uh, it is now going to be 51 to 72. Epsilon is taking the lead. And now they're slowly but surely uh, stretching out. Yes, absolutely. And Fnatic, it lo oh, looks like a nice one and a half kill there from M Unfix taking control of that gray building. They they sent a three-man push onto that one. And it looks like B and A are both being nuched. A is going to be taken control of by Epsilon, but a good four-man push by Fnatic onto Bravo. And a couple of back spawns by Mayak and Akash on the left side of the map. And a BC hold is one that you can actually reinforce here. Is it looks like they're trying to draw a line in the sand or Fnatic to try to make up this ticket difference and concede A here, Brett. Yeah, um, but I think that I, th I think that Fnatic will be able to hold on to this. Um, they've been, uh, I, th I think they got a pretty good hold on this. They have two over into dorms, although we do have some spawns over there for Epsilon, so that can give them a little bit of trouble here if they can hold on to Greyhouse. Oh, double they can't kill Because Duke. guess what? Duke BT decided to show up, and he said no. And uh, as soon as he jumped down, he was taken down. But being able to clear out Greyhouse is going to definitely hurt the positioning for Fnatic. They're going to have to spawn all the way over here into B House. And some random spawns going to be coming in. Uh, so that's going to be hurting them a little bit. C is going to be going into the possession of uh, Epsilon right now. A is still going to be highly contested. Core going to have to get down there and get that burn for his team right now. The only one left back up is going to be Winghaven, who really hasn't done a whole lot this match. He's only about uh, 7 and 14. Yeah, we are seeing a bit of chaos here in the closing minutes of this round. It's the first round on Gold Mode Railway. It's 40 to 50 in favor of Epsilon right now. Akash looking pretty strong for his team. Duke BT 1911. Let's watch Valu Taja just took control of C. It's a CB hold for Fnatic, but they're being a little bit aggressive. He's going to come down on the backside. Oh, he's getting shot from behind. 39 to 44. He catches Mayak there. Takes him out with a nice headshot. And it looks like we are going to see a push from Epsilon onto Bravo here. Duke PT and Akash. Duke PT on the backside of Dirt trying to get a bit of a head glitch there. Oh, he does go down from the side. So nice reinforcement by Fnatic to hold on to CB. 38 to 36. They do retake the lead. And they are being aggressive here. Going for the triple cap. Too easy on A. And it looks like Fnatic is going to potentially take this round after being trailing there uh, momentarily ago. Yeah, this is basically a switch positions from map number one as we're going to be having Fnatic coming from behind, but getting that three cap at the last second and just holding on to it, trying to make something happen out of this. We will be seeing Epsilon all ganged up over there into Grey House, uh, trying to push out onto B flag, but that's not going to happen as we do have Valutasia who he decided to heat up with 25 and 8 right now, uh, definitely getting those frags for his teammates. And Garar will be trying to push up onto CISO. Uh, 14 tickets left, 36 to 14. This is crazy. Fnatic at the last second decided, you know what? I want this to go to a map number three, and they're definitely heating up. Yeah, absolutely. We're watching Valutasia here coming on the backside of Alpha trying to reinforce it. It's 36 to 4. They're being extremely aggressive. Takes out Akash. He's making it 26 and 8. He knows there's one more behind there, and that is it. Fnatic with a triple cap to finish out this round to surge from behind. 36 to 0, and you got to be confident and happy with that performance if you're Fnatic. It was neck and neck, a lot of uh, trading back and forth, 20 ticket lead here, 30 ticket lead there, but Fnatic surging from behind to win the first round here on the second map, Red. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know what? I, I think uh, Valutasia is, is really one to point out on that one just because he was able to keep his team in it with the frags. Um, Look at the points, you know, when you too. Go 26, yeah, when you go 26 and 8 right there, he's doubled the points of any of his teams. He's He was everywhere on the map getting on those uh, uh, caps, and he stopped a couple of the caps himself. So uh, going huge for his teammates and uh, really, really lowering the hammer down on Epsilon. So uh, this next round, it's going to be about 39 tickets or 36 tickets. I'm sorry. 36 tickets that Epsilon has to beat. Now, what's really funny about this is if it is as Mess says, that would mean that Epsilon beat Fnatic on their map. And Fnatic has the potential and the chance to be Epsilon on their, their map. map. That's right. <laughs> Wouldn't that be apropos going into the uh, final map, which neither team will have chosen? 
It'll be a showdown yeah. on a random to see who truly is the best, at least today, in the Gaming Grids 5v5 Domination New Year's Bash Tournament. And I think, Brett, we can certainly say that thus far, this match has been everything we had hoped it would be. We hope it just continues to be as riveting and as exciting as it has been thus far. Yeah, absolutely. And right now, this is make or break it for Fnatic. They have to win this round. They have to get it below 36 tickets and in order to keep in keep in the finals. If they lose this round by more than 36 tickets, it is done. Epsilon will take it. And this is not going to be live, guys, as uh, Too Easy is a uh, call-in for a pause. It looks like one of their players did drop, so uh, we will be getting him back in in just a few moments. Mort did uh, – or not Mort. Mort didn't crash. Which, by the way, I, will, I do want to mention the fact that Mort had an amazing knife on this map in Grey House, being a sneaky little ninja there. <laughs> I don't know if Mess actually got that, but he no, was I out didn't. of ammo, down to his pistol, hiding in a corner. Okay, waited for one of the players from AAA. I forgot who it was, but waited for him to come around the corner and then back knifed him. It was <laughs> amazing. Picked up his gun and then proceeded to get a couple of more kills and flat cats for his team. Just an amazing job right there. So, I mean, if it, it if it was MVP, that right th over the, like, the whole tournament, that right there impressed me the most. I will say that, but it's not. It's of the finals match. Uh, so I am still not going to tell you what exactly I say to yeah. but <laughs> anywho's doesn't, doesn't want to let you know what he's thinking. Yeah, well, especially since uh, I've done a couple of these MVP things, and I've been like severely grilled over my decision. So yeah, when there's money on the line, people will definitely grill you in that respect. You know, uh, it doesn't do hold even a little bit of power. Doesn't even have to be money, but it's pride on the line too, Red. Right, pride. Yeah. <laughs> So once again, folks, this is the Gaming Grids 5v5 Domination Tournament Finals. Fifteen hundred bucks on the line. Twelve hundred of that goes to the winner of this match. Three hundred to the loser. Hundred dollar MVP cup as well, which will be decided by the forecasters, myself, Brett, Chadman, and Dogbert, who are over on the Gaming Grids Two channel. We encourage you to check that out too. If you got the bandwidth, multi twitch it. You get to watch from multiple camera perspectives. You can swap between sounds. You know, if you want to hear Chadman and Dogbert talk. Get a little bit of that European accent going on, or if you want to listen to me and Brett talk, you can do that as well. So we encourage you to watch both. Are you are you saying that Euros have all the same accents? No. In fact, European they don't accent. because they have very different do Chad and dog. But that's what I'm saying. You get a bit of a variety in that cast. But you said it was a European accent. I just said. Well, well technically, it'd be like a UK accent. <laughs> that's true. Come on, Broski. You can't lump them all in the same category. I didn't mean, mean to do that, Brett. I was not can't, trying to be generic. You can't pull I was not trying to be generic. <laughs> <laughs> Brett, taking me to task here. As we are starting the second round of the second map, Fnatic responding in kind after losing the first map to Epsilon in the lead by 36 tickets on Gold Mode Railway, trying to force a third map tiebreaker here in the finals of the Gaming Grid's Domination Tournament. And we're going to see the breakout here in less than 10 seconds, Brett. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what comes out of this. Uh, actually, no, it should be one re one more restart, I believe. No? Uh, Is it not one more restart? It's now definitely not live, <laughs> uh, judging no, by what they're doing. we have a issue now. Yeah, Garar is still... <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. 179. Um, yeah, we certainly don't want to continue if someone's yeah, so having that kind of issue yeah we're not live on here uh he's going to be dropping out and coming back in unfortunately this this does happen so um we will be getting going uh, hopefully as soon as he gets in but epsilon will be on the russian side and uh they will be able to get cmb first well, Fnatic will have to decide, which I believe Fnatic will probably do an all-A push like they did on the last match with against AAA. Yeah, um, it'll be interesting to see. With a 36-ticket uh, lead, it's not really that much to count on. you got to play to win this round, especially against the likes of Epsilon. And being that they are going to have the easier breakout, they might want to be a little aggressive and not necessarily uh, uh, play it safe here to start, try to establish a little bit of dominance here in the second round, because their backs are against the wall. Remember, Epsilon can lose this map. They certainly don't want to, because then it's you know do or die on the next map. But they can't afford to lose this map, whereas Fnatic cannot. 
Yeah, exactly. It, well, I mean, I know from, from competitive experience myself, uh, if I have a little bit of leeway there, I actually play better than when my back is against the wall. If I lose the first round or if I lose the first map, um, I play worse the second one just because I have my stress levels up a little bit. Tense up a little um, bit, yeah. Yeah, and so uh, being able to have that little bit of a buffer – uh, it's going to relieve it. Now, you can't swing it so far in one direction as to where you're just careless because you know you don't want to give the game away and take it to a third map. You don't ever want to do that. But um, we will, uh, you know, it, it, it'll come into play a little bit, I think, here. But both of these teams are very good. They've all been in this situation. They've, every single one of them have been in this situation multiple times within the last two months. So this is nothing new to them. They're, they're used to it. But it does have a little bit of an effect right now. So, yeah, we are still waiting for a couple of players to get in the server. Having some ping and uh, perhaps crash issues. Again, it is Battlefield 4, so that's bound to happen, especially when you're casting for roughly five hours. We are in the finals. Epsilon taking map one. Fnatic hoping to take map two as they did win the first round. Valutasia, hell of a performance, uh, dropping a 20-plus bomb. Uh, pretty good performance by Morte thus far, getting some of those clutch kills while not necessarily lighting up the scoreboard. But Epsilon going to have the easier breakout on this map, as we said earlier. So perhaps capitalizing on that forward momentum to start this round to make up that 36 ticket difference. And I'm really excited to see how this pans out. I hope we, you know, the the fan in me wants to see a third map, to be honest. Just because of how good the first two have been thus far, Brett. All right, well, I want to ask you a tough question. Okay. And this is also for the chat. Just uh, right now, if you're in chat, just type in whatever team that you're rooting for. So if it's Fnatic, type in Fnatic. If it's Epsilon, type in Epsilon. I just want to see uh, how many people we actually have that are rooting. Or do you, do you care at all? I'm rooting uh, for Epsilon. If, yeah, honestly, I, I'll say it. I'm rooting for Epsilon. I'm, I'm rooting for Epsilon, too. I want to see them win. It's, I've seen them multiple times go up against Fnatic and lose. And uh, plus, you know, I know some of the Epsilon guys. I know Duke BT. I've actually uh, worked with him uh, on a LAN. And one of the very first uh, shoutcasts that I ever did, uh, I did with Duke PT as uh, one of my admins nice. uh, on a, a Portugal LAN. So, yeah, a little bit there. I, I kind of know Duke a little bit, worked with him before, and I'm kind of I'm rooting for him. I'm rooting for him. Looks like we got uh, two, three, four for Epsilon. We got three, four for Fnatic, kind of neck and neck. Uh <laughs> we got an MYM like thrown like in the there. MYM right there. <laughs> Rival gaming. <laughs> it's a throwback to BF3. <laughs> oh, yeah. Someone says make yeah. a make a poll. Yeah, yeah. Chat. Why don't somebody in chat make a straw poll and we'll all participate to see uh, who who we want as a community Rival to win gaming. this matchup. No, I don't think Rival Gaming is going to make us show up anytime soon. <laughs> you shout out to Mew, Mew Mav there. Team Mag. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Meg was doing a great job there, man. He was, he was definitely holding it down for his team there at the beginning. Yes, Jabby. This is a tournament. We're in the finals. You got here just in time to see the best part, man. You Good job. They were playing. You may have actually did not even sign up for this tournament. No, they so. didn't. So curiously absent. Um, hopefully maybe see them in future Gaming Grids tournaments. Yeah, uh, we we'll definitely love to see that. I really and did like the thing turnout. that I'd like to mention, guys, here. Uh, yes, it is very late for the EU guys, and we appreciate the players for staying up and doing this. We appreciate yes. the, the, the viewers for staying up and watching this. Uh, but in the future, Gaming Grids will be working on a NA-specific tournament and an EU-specific tournament. Right. So that, that we don't way. have to worry about uh, the really bad time differences here. It's going to be a lot easier on you guys and the players who are from Europe uh, to play in these things and to watch them. So uh, we are definitely looking forward to those and uh, we should be, uh, hopefully here in the coming months, we'll be able to uh, to uh, have some of those coming up. Yes, and I believe we are going live here. It's Epsilon versus Fnatic here in the finals. Epsilon taking the first map lockers, both rounds, winning them pretty handed. Well, the first round was three tickets. Second one was 50 plus. But Fnatic responding in kind, winning the first round of Gold Mud Railway by, I believe, 36 tickets. So not a huge lead. Uh, perhaps easy for, not easy, but uh, Epsilon can respond here and win this match and two maps and not even give Fnatic a chance to win it on a tiebreaker, Brad. Call the breakout here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that Fnatic is going to have a five-man push to A like they did last time. Epsilon will most likely be doing a three- to four-man push to B. Well, actually, they're doing a three-man push to they did B. the delayed spot again. Yeah, following it up with uh, a push from the C flag. 
<clears throat> they left one player over there into dorms. It's going to be Duke PT with nobody to shoot at, really. And uh, there it is. Fnatic able to take A. And it looks like they're going to be populating, kind of getting stuck a little bit here. Garar going to have a really nice shot over here onto Fnatic. Too easy does end up going down. Unfixed might be going down here in just a second. And he does. Winghaven going to be filling out once again. So actually, Fnatic has shown both times that uh, their route that they go after they cap A. Is, might not be the best one, as we have seen them getting wiped almost every time. Yeah, it seems like Epsilon may have them figured out, at least on their breakouts on this map, as we do see a BC hold for Epsilon, but C is being contested by two from Fnatic. It's too easy there. He tries to take down A. Yes, he does. Oh, no, it looks like his teammate Morte takes down Akash from below, and they will take control of C. Meanwhile, A is being contested. We're watching from Duke PT's perspective. They are going to take control of that. It's an AB hold. It's a very favorable hold, but we do have unfixed who is in the stairwell below, in between Alpha and Bravo. He's in the back alley there. It's an AB hold for Epsilon, and looking pretty good. We got a 3-0, 2-0, and a 1-0 from Epsilon. Gera leading the way for Epsilon right now. Yeah, and it does look like Fnatic is going to be making a play onto A. He does end up capping that out, so that is going to be a good job for Winghaven. Going to be uh, definitely helping out his team there, uh, possibly you know shifting the attention away so that they can make a play onto B flag. But Akash is going to have none of that. He's already jumping up onto C flag. We'll be able to get the grade on that. So uh, Epsilon is doing a really good job of shifting around the map as they're losing flags. They're making sure that they're taking another one, uh, and, and they're they're always uh, shifting in those processes though. So definitely a good job there. They're going to be able to take out a very quick lead, like we saw in that last matchup. They're going to get about uh, a 30 ticket lead, maybe a 40 ticket lead coming up here um, but the thing that they have to watch out for is not be getting into those spawn traps where they're always going to be spawning up on perch yes we see epsilon has only lost seven tickets thus far watch from duke's perfect oh exposes himself a little too much on the roof a nice kill there gara has moved up on alpha it looks like they are going to have no he has to retreat quickly as someone came out on him Meanwhile, Unfix is going to take control of the Charlie flag. It's a one on one there. Kenny Winnett eats a nade in the face, has to move off of the burn there. Akash coming around the corner. He does go down. Unfix getting the res on his teammate, and it looks like they are going to win the battle on C. <laughs> Had to kill the med pack so he actually could revive his teammate. So it looks like Fnatic, nice response. They took control of C and B and have tried to isolate Epsilon over onto that A flag. It could be a triple cap. It's Valotasia moving out onto Alpha. It's a one-on-one -on -one there. Oh, he eats an A and it does go down. So it looks like Epsilon will take control of A. Yeah, but that's what I was talking about. I mean, it, it, it switches, it swings back and forth so fast as uh, already since they got that two cap, they, Epsilon has lost, or Fnatic has lost uh, 10 tickets. I'm sorry, Epsilon has lost 10 tickets. It's been a long day, guys. But it is now 179 to 153, still in favor of Epsilon. They did end up uh, capping C flight. They got some nice perch spawns to come back down and uh, cap that flag for them. Fnatic going to be kind of stuck in a weird position here. Uh, we do have two players sitting up over into dorms, and they will be pressuring C flag. That was very good on their part but uh, they really want to get a they they need to get onto this a flag and i think they should be able to do so uh with gara is the only one that's going to be left up uh right now he does get some spawns on him for duke bt that's unfixed that's going to be trying to finish this cap for him and he will be able to do so yeah nice job oh unfixed comes through the doorway goes down to duke bt you want to see is being contested it looks like that is mayak over there on the burn he's got one coming down from perch side it's Fnatic too easy. Slow playing it coming in. He knows Maek is somewhere on the burn there. He's got a nade out. Oh! <laughs> it's an impact shot trade. But meanwhile, look at this. Epsilon with the triple cap. Fnatic going to have to respond quickly. Looks like it's going to be a two-on-two -on, -two on the C flag. We're watching from Winghaven's perspective. C's Duke PT. Duke PT, nice shot through the window. Takes him out, but C is nooch. It looks like that's too easy. Still on the burn there, but he's going to get flanked for perhaps more of... Epsilon, nope, nope. It looks like he is going to take... No, he does get shot from behind. That's a two-piece from Core, who he also gets shot from behind. It looks like that might have been Morte. Try to come in for the resin. He's going to get two pickups there, and Fnatic going to take control of C. But it looks like Epsilon is good, good position here to set a line to hold on to A and B for a bit of time here, Brad. Yeah, it is now 168 to 18, or 118, uh, in favor of Epsilon. They are very, very, uh, are getting that, that lead a lot more than what it was. So, uh, looking good for Epsilon. They have the AB hold. They're going to be forcing Fnatic across those perch spawns to have to cross open ground. Uh, we will be seeing a slight little skirmish over into Grey Isles, but that's going to be okay. Epsilon taking that out, no problem. Uh, but <clears throat> this is where it gets, it gets scary. This is where it starts getting scary for Fnatic because, you know, those 30-40 ticket uh, leads... 
those aren't really nothing. You can come back from those, get a triple cap, bam, you're done, you're there. But when you start getting into the 70, 80 ticket leads, that's scary. That's scary stuff right there. That gives the other team a way too much leeway to make mistakes and then come back. Because right about the time that you even out that score, that's when you mess up and they start, you know, scoring back once again. So they need to be able to get on a flag now. They are going to be contesting B. They are going to be cleaning it up. It looks like they have three people over into B house. And uh, this is, the, they need this. They need to get this BC cap and hold it. Just a crucial play. We see Winghaven on the Bravo point. Oh, Nades out. Exposed himself too much. It looks like Duke PT took him down. Bravo is still open. Fnatic unfixed. Hanging out in the B house. He does clean up the kill. And he's going to have to move on to the burn quickly. It's like you said, Brett. It's still open for grabs. But they are down by over 70 tickets at this point. And it's growing. And I'm, I'm kind of wondering why Unfix isn't moving out on the Bravo flag. Uh, it's It's been open for quite some time now, but it does look like, meanwhile, Fnatic Morte over on the A flag. He's going to take control of that one. It's an AC hold. Nope, nope. Meanwhile, Gara moving over to C, and B is still open, Brad. What, what do you make of that? Well, B is open just because of Greyhouse. I mean, you have two EZ right now locking it down. That's how important that, uh, that position is. They, and there is absolutely nothing that uh, Epsilon can do until that is taken care of. And uh, we're finally going to be seeing uh, Too Easy getting taken down and pushed out of Grey House. B will be capped for Epsilon, finally. So, uh, but the thing is, is that now Epsilon is going to be over onto the, the C side, kind of. Uh, Fnatic should be able to push him out. I'm, I'm guessing that they will be able to push him out and get onto B, although C is now going to be flashing. It's going to be a one-on-one -on -one here between Winghaven and Akosh, with Akosh coming out on top, who's been doing that uh, this entire map right now. Just uh, really holding it down for his team. Valutasia, though, may be coming in and having something to say about oh, it. Yeah, yes. he's going to be able to take him down. So nice job there. And now C will be going back into the possession of uh, Fnatic here. But as that's happening, they lost all the presence on A. And A is going to be capped once again for absolute fun. Oh, so and look at this positioning. Is going back in that look episode. at this positioning. Just like you said, Brett, that AB hold is so fortunate because if they get those unlucky spawns over on the perch side, they're completely isolated. And Epsilon is able to set a line. who's seen a one-on-one. -on -one. Akash coming out on top on that one again. He's 10-5 and five for his team now. They're going to try to keep him isolated onto the roadside. It's Fnatic looks in like a strong push to the backside of Bravo. One goes down. Fnatic unfixed. Coming up. Takes out Maik. Nice job by him. It looks like he might try to hop over the wall potentially to get onto the Bravo burn. No, meanwhile, it looks like Too Easy was able to take the long way home and get on the Alpha. Looks like Cora's going to try to respond to that one. And meanwhile, it looks like a four-man fight on Bravo. It's going to be a showdown. Epsilon May it goes down. Core is also... No, he's across the way there. It looks like Fnatic Morte is going to win the day on Bravo. And yeah, it looks like Fnatic backs against the wall here. If they... If they go below 36 tickets, that's that's it for them, right? No, Fnatic won the first round. So <clears throat> right now, Fnatic Excuse just me. has to win. If long, as long as they bring Epsilon down below 36 tickets, they will be the victors in this. But the problem is, is that they are now 100 tickets behind. That is a very, very long, long time that they have to hold a two, two cap bleed. And not only do they have to hold that two cap bleed, but they have to win their frags. They have to win every one of their battles. And that is a tall order against Epsilon, especially when you got players out there like uh, DuPT and Akash who's starting to heat up, as well as Core. That's not that's not a, an easy thing to do. No, absolutely not. And we'll watch from Max's perspective. He's moved up to Bravo. He's got a nade out. Looks like they are going to take control. He's going to try to revive his teammate DuPT. He does get it. A nice 90 revive there. You don't see those quite often in comp. It's an AB hold for Epsilon, and it's a, it's all kinds of people on the B flag. We're watching Winghaven. He's trying to jump up on that box. Takes a couple tries. Nate out. Hops over onto the B burn, and he's in a vulnerable spot there. Gara there takes him out, but it looks like he gets taken out from the B flag. B house, excuse me. Too easy coming out. He goes down, and Epsilon looking to take command and control. It's an AB hold once again, and they're really favoring this one, keeping Fnatic pinned back across the road on that seaside of the map, Brett. Yeah, and right now, uh, it's very surprising. I'm looking at the KDs. Valutasia, 9 and 14. Unfix, 6 and 11. Winghaven, 3 and 12. That That's just, uh, wow. You know, and, and the fact that Valutasia, who is arguably the best fragger, at the moment for Fnatic, he's been just doing crazy, crazy work for him in multiple matches. If he can't heat up here, Fnatic's not going to be able to come back. Yeah, it is quickly slipping away as they are below 20 tickets now. 19 tickets, and 
And Fnatic, or excuse me, Epsilon is keeping their foot on the gas pedal as Gera is pushed up on his seat going for the triple cap. Can't quite get it as Fnatic gets on there quickly. Oh, he takes down one. It's unfixed. Drops a med pack. Can he get the second? No, he finally does go down. And meanwhile, it looks like B is also being contested. But there's two from Epsilon in B house. It's Epsilon Mayek. They did reinforce and take control, but it's an AC hold for Epsilon. And you hear the telltale music. Can Fnatic respond if they lose this round? As it currently stands, Epsilon will win the tournament. And yes, it looks and like Fnatic is, is conceding it. it. There they go. GGs, GGs are thrown out. That was an amazing match right there. I, I gotta say, that was uh, that was awesome. That was uh, that was just an amazing play. Yeah, absolutely everything we could have hoped for in a finals matchup. Fnatic, fine, or excuse me, Epsilon, finally getting over the hump and defeating Fnatic. One, it looks like it's gonna be one thirty-four ish to thirty-six in this final map. Oh, wow, what 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 a match! What a match, Brett. Uh, yeah, I don't think was... we could have asked for more. That was a great match right there, going back and forth. Um, honestly, I was uh, I was not surprised with Epsilon taking lockers. I figured they would win lockers. Um, the fact that that wasn't their map that they chose, uh, you know, maybe makes a little bit more sense now, especially on that second round on Gold Mud. Uh, they played it very very well. Uh, played it uh, exactly the way they needed to. They were winning their frags. They were great on positioning. So um, you know. Fnatic, maybe they're just losing a little bit of their touch right now. Um, although it is pretty late for them, so maybe they're just tired. <laughs> yeah, it has been a long day for all of us. Uh, I believe we are up. Yeah, we are over the six hour mark now on our Skype call, Aaron. So it's definitely been a long day for us. And we're doing a little bit of discussion behind the scenes for this uh, MVP decision. Again, Epsilon winning the tournament. $1,200 of that $1,500 purse going to them. Congrats to Fnatic for the runner-up position. They'll get $300, and we're trying to decide who will get that MVP extra $100 purse. And, again, it's up to the casters, myself, Brett, Dogbert, and Chadman kind of discussing things behind the scenes. Sound off in chat. What do you think, folks? Who do you think deserves the MVP and the $100 extra purse? In this tournament from the finals now it's a finals MVP folks keep it keep that in mind and again it doesn't have to be the a player from the winning team so if you thought maybe someone from Fnatic uh, really piggybacked them and and deserves that MVP spot you know cer certainly let us know it doesn't have to be from the winning team like no one in chat weighing in just yet on who they think the MVP should be. Yeah, so uh, we are going to be getting that underway um, in chat right now. Guys, we do appreciate everybody for showing up and uh, checking out the stream. We really do appreciate it. And all of the European guys who stayed up, appreciate it. Appreciate both of these teams for staying up and uh, playing it out. We also thank everyone who competed in this event for coming out and playing. It was awesome we really do appreciate it more events will be in the future this was a free event guys fifteen hundred dollar prize pool for the uh for the tournament i believe it's going to be eight hundred is, is eight hundred dollars that goes to first no twelve hundred to first three hundred to second twelve hundred twelve hundred to first guys it's an 80 20 80 20